All right, so metal activities, or sometimes you hear it as metal reactivities. Um, and we're just, in, in that context, we're talking about single replacement reactions. And if a reaction will take place based on how active the metal is, is the, is the free um, metal more active than the metal that's in the compound. So that's, that's kind of what we're looking at today. If a reaction will occur um, when it's a single replacement reaction containing the replacement of the metal. Um, so metals occur naturally um, two ways, either as an ore, which means that it is in a compound or as a free metal, um, the more, um, the, or the less active, that's what I should say, less active metals are the ones that usually appear in their free state. So those are ones that you can typically make like coins or jewelry out of. Um, so silver, gold, platinum, uh, copper, stuff like that. Um, ones that usually appear in compounds um, are the ones that are um, just more active. So the alkali metals will always appear in compounds. Even the alkaline metals will do that too. And then you have your transition metals where they're sort of like the middle of the road. Some of them will appear in a compound, especially given time. So something like um, uh, iron or aluminum given time will react. Um, therefore, they're a little bit more active than say some of the more stable ones like gold or silver. Um, so what you see here, which is a little blurry, I apologize. It's more clear on your um, on your homework. Um, but this is like an activity scale. It, you should be able to find it in your book as well. Um, but basically, as you go up this table, you get more and more active. So lithium is the most active metal. And then you can see at the bottom, gold is the least active. Um, you can see right in the middle, we have aluminum, magnesium, zinc, chromium, iron. Um, they tend to all turn into oxides um, after some time. So uh, what we're looking at over here on the left is the step-by-steps determining if a reaction is going to occur. Um, so again, that table is on page 145 of your chemistry in the community textbook. Um, and then which metal is more active? So the ones on the top are more active and the ones on the bottom are less active. Uh, metal that's higher on the activity series means that it's more willing to give up an electron. When it can give up an electron, then it can react, right? If it wants to hold on to its electrons, um, it might react by pulling something away, but that's, those, that's what non-metals do, not metals. Metals don't take electrons, they give them away. So the more willing they are to give them away, the more likely they are to be reactive, so then they're higher on that chart. Um, if we're looking at um, the, it doesn't look like a single replacement reaction, but um, the single replacement reaction at the top where we have calcium plus the gold ion. Um, when it has a charge like that, it's an ion. Ions don't float around just aimlessly, right? Um, they're actually part of compounds, but for chemistry purposes, we're breaking it down into an individual ion. So um, gold would then be in the compound because calcium is more readily available to give up ion or electrons. You can see because it's higher on that chart it will give its electrons to gold, which is great. Gold wants the electrons, right? It's missing three right now, it wants to gain three. So calcium is gonna give up the electron and on the product side, we see that calcium is a two plus and that gold is now um, neutral because it's given up, uh, the calcium gave up its electrons, it became an ion, then the gold gained the electrons that the calcium gave away and it became um, a solid metal, no longer an ion, no longer part of the reaction. So uh, when we say that a, an element is giving up electrons, it's losing electrons, that means it's becoming more positive. So if you compare it on the product side to the reactant side, we have calcium um, in our top reaction there, we have calcium on the reactant side and then on the product side, it lost electrons, it got more positive. It went from a zero, right? Calcium one, nothing written, a zero to a plus two. Um, we call that oxidization. And a little acronym to help you remember that is OIL. The word OIL, O-I-L, oxidization is losing 
And then of course we're referring to electrons. So calcium there is being oxidized. Um, it is losing electrons to become calcium two plus. On the flip side of that, we have um, a gold three plus is being reduced. Um, sometimes it helps you to think of the number being reduced, right? Three plus is going to zero on the product side. Um, but what reduced means, it means that it's gaining electrons, which is also what we see happening, right? Electrons are negative. So with gold as a three plus, it gains three electrons to become um, an oxidation state of zero. Um, so uh, it, therefore it's reducing, it's being reduced. And again, the uh, acronym for that, you guys can see that there in green is RIG. So oil rig oxidization is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. So who's being reduced? Who's being oxidized? You're going to be asked that quite a bit. And you're going to compare the um, product to the reactant to decide who's gaining and who's losing electrons. Um, we also have another key term here. We call it the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. Um, we typically uh, label agents on the product side of the reaction um, in the forward reaction. So in this case where calcium was being oxidized to become calcium two plus, the calcium two plus is being reduced to become calcium. If you go backwards, that makes calcium two plus the reducing agent and then gold um, with an oxidation state of zero going backwards is now the oxidizing agent. Um, you can see down here at number four, the half reactions are written for oxidization and reduction. Um, we see the half reaction for oxidization where calcium is becoming calcium two plus. And then we write these two electrons as a product because the calcium released those two electrons to become calcium two plus. Here in the reducing one, we have gold three plus, it's gaining three electrons. So we write that on the reactant side, gaining three electrons to become gold with an oxidation state of zero. Um, you're gonna see uh, some more actual examples on how we would um, determine if a reaction is going to happen, how to write the half reactions on your digital notebook. But please let me know if you have any general questions.